welcome back to Study with Aditi. My name is Aditi and this channel is dedicated to revision tips and tricks, along with much more, to help make your schooling life a whole lot easier. Today we'll be talking about how to revise music and all the different components like appraising, composition and performing. Today I've got a very special guest with me named Deborah. We've actually been friends for quite a number of years now. She will just be helping me out with this video. So firstly, we're going to start off with performing. Performing is really important. I feel like it's a part of the whole course that can really boost up your grade because it's one of them that's not so academic. So if you really enjoy playing your instrument, then you can, this can really boost up your grade. Remember, in any free time you have, practice. After you've done all your revising for your maths, your English, whatever else you're doing. Or music. Yeah. You know. Make sure you get your instrument, spend at least half an hour going over your piece, making sure you really know what you're doing. Oh, and if you play more than one instrument, try and pick the instrument that you like have the highest grade in, or if you don't do grades, then just pick the instrument that you're most comfortable with and go with that, really. Recording yourself can be really helpful. I would say um, having your iPhone out or something, having a voice memo going, continually recording yourself and afterwards just have a listen, look at the bits that are a little bit more challenging, spend some more time on that so you really get mm -hmm. it perfect. Instead of starting in the beginning of the piece, if you find the beginning easy then you may want to start the bits that you actually find challenging. When you're practicing make sure you ask yourself these questions, am I playing at the right speed, am I hesitating? Am I properly making sure it sounds expressive with dynamics? You really want to make sure you're getting the best out of this because it's a really good chunk of the course to boost up your grade. So you want to make mm -hmm. sure it's perfect. Also remember, longer pieces are not necessarily better. You can get tired and it may end up sounding a mess. And it's just a little bit stressful knowing that you've got a 15 minute concerto to learn. Just it's stick true. with something yeah. that you like to play and something that's challenging enough so you can get the best grade. Also try and get as many official recordings from the start of year 10 as possible because um, you may not be able to get more recordings as you go through the course. So we had quite a lot of deadlines for draft recordings that we actually submitted into our teacher. So if you don't have that then try and set some deadlines for yourself. Really think about the difficulty of the piece that you're playing. It doesn't necessarily have to be a grade 8 for it to be good. Grade 5 is the highest difficulty needed. So as long as it's challenging enough and you can play it well, then I think it's a good choice. I think it's grade 1 to 3 is less difficult. Grade 4 is the standard and then grade 5 plus is more difficult. In the textbook that I actually had for GCSE, it said that for less difficult pieces you could get around 20 out of 30, for standard pieces it was 25 out of 30 and then more difficult pieces was 30 out of 30. I personally did a grade 6 piece, um, that was because I didn't actually like the grade 5 piece that I did for my actual grade, so I thought that the grade 6 piece was a lot better, so that's the only reason why I did a grade 6 piece. But, to be honest, grade 5 piece is just as good. So now we're going to be talking about composition. So you want to be listening to the type of stuff that you actually want to compose, especially for the free composition, because you have, for GCSE Edexcel this is, you have one free composition and you also have one briefed composition, and that briefed composition is based on the areas of study that you've been doing over the course. Yeah, I feel like when you're listening to this kind of stuff, make notes. What are the things that you actually like about the music? The instrumentation, the dynamics that they use, the structures of the song, to really give you ideas and inspiration when it comes to your own music. It's important that you develop your musical ideas. So once you get an idea, make sure it sounds good on its own. And then later on in the piece, you can develop it by adding more instruments, maybe echoing the melodies in different instruments and um, changing dynamics, maybe even key signature sometimes, to make sure that it sounds varied and it sounds like you have control of the music. 
But if you're gonna be doing things like dynamics, which you should, try and do them later. I mean, it's quite tempting to do like the easy stuff first, but honestly, you wanna do the hard stuff first because without an actual melody, you can't add dynamics. You wanna be demonstrating technical control as well. So that kind of means that the techniques that you use within your composition aren't all over the place. So they have to be coherent and that links on to the next point which is composing with musical co coherence. When composing with musical coherence, you really want to make sure the music sounds like it's going somewhere. So knowing your keywords and knowing about structure, if you're doing binary for, some, for one of your compositions, you want to make sure that the first section and the last section actually do sound the same and there's a clear distinction between all of the parts so that your music sounds complete. Also for the brief composition you want to stick to the brief because if you don't then the examiner is going to mark you down for that. For example if you're using reverb for a baroque piece it's just not going to work so you have to like be mindful of your time period as well. Another tip if you feel like you really want to get your ideas down could be using free composition sites, for example, MuseScore. These are just online. If you don't have manuscript paper with the stave on it, you can just notate your ideas that you might have recorded before and get them up in school. This can be a little bit tedious, but as a last minute option, you know, to just get your ideas down is a good idea. You could actually also record yourself like playing the melody on the piano also if you're using Sibelius um, towards the end what I did was um, I think it was in the last month before our deadline I got a 30 day free trial with them so that meant that I didn't have to actually pay for using their services but I still managed to use them and that's really helpful especially in the last month because you want to be working on that composition whenever you can like, the rest of your schoolwork, I shouldn't be saying this, but I am, it doesn't matter mm. for, this, mm. for this bit of time. You really just want to be doing it whenever you can. If your only access is at school, then you're not going to get as much done as you should do. So I think that 30 day free trial is very good. Now we're going to move on to appraising, in other words, the listening part of the course. You really want to familiarise yourself with your set works. You want to know them inside out. In any spare time you get, as well as you're performing, you want to be listening to them. You know, and as you're listening to them, just thinking about all those different things that you're going to talk about, the harmony, tonality, texture, those things that you can mention in your essay questions to really make them stand out. Once you know them and you know some of your wider listening as well, it can really help to boost up your detail in, that, in those questions. You can also try and listen to them with the score, so like follow the score as you listen to them, that way you can see all the notes that you've written on the score as well and your brain can like associate that little bar mm. or something with the note you've written beside it. Because there's so much information on all of the different areas of studies as well as, you, as, well as your set works, it's important to condense them down, so really summarise your notes. If you prefer mind maps or flashcards, just get into the habit of starting to make them, usually as you're going through the course. If you're in year 11, I would say really start now, making sure that they're all condensed down and ready for you to just look at mm -hmm. before the exam. But if you're still learning the course, as you're going through each area of study, make a little revision pack for maybe the back of your divider. NXL have written some documents and they're basically like mini study guides for each set work. This is for NXL GCSE, I'm not sure about the other boards. But um, what I did was I made flashcards from those documents. So those documents literally have everything you need to know about each set work. They have the context, forming forces, structure, tonality, everything. So what I did was made flashcards from those. And because all the set works looked so similar on flashcards, I color coded them just so my brain could associate, oh yeah, this color was for this set work. Something to really boost up your grades in the essay questions and knowing about context. When you can refer to the wider situation, what was going wrong, going on in the time that the 
piece was composed you can really whiz up your grade because it shows the examiner that you went a little bit a step further and you know what you're talking about and it can help you to get that further depth into explaining what the piece is about. Mm -hmm. So as we said before for composition if you know your keywords it makes it a whole lot easier and this is definitely the case for appraising as well because you actually have to use your keywords they use keywords in the paper as well and if you don't know them then it's not going to work. You could write them on flashcards or something, um, you could use Quizlet or Memrise. There's probably a glossary in one of the revision guides or textbooks that you might have so I think using their definitions is quite good because usually they have all the keywords within the definition of the keyword if that makes sense. You want to be able to develop the ability to express an opinion especially in the essay questions so make sure you do a plan before you start them you really want to make sure you're keeping to the time maybe the amount of marks the amount is the amount of minutes that you spend on it and making this plan can just make putting your ideas in a coherent manner much easier. It'd be much more structured as well and from the plan if you don't finish the essay then you can still get marks from the plan which is really good so if you don't do a plan then you can't get those extra marks. Command words are really good if you know them so in a question they'll probably put something at the start like discuss or explain or describe something like that and I also mentioned this in my how to revise geography video I did a whole like thing on it and it's really similar in music because you don't want to be describing where you're meant to be explaining that sort of thing. I'm just going to read out some types of questions that are written in my old GCSE textbook. So these are possible question types. So the first one they've given is identify instruments and groups of instruments and how combinations of instruments are used. Second one is name playing techniques such as pizzicato, use of mute, colenio, etc. That's how you pronounce it, isn't it? The third one is spot melodic and harmonic devices such as sequences, pedals, ostinato, etc. Fourth one is identify rhythmic features such as swung rhythms, etc. Fifth one is Name specific tonalities, major, minor, modal, pentatonic, atonal, hexatonic, octatonic, etc. And the sixth one they've given is name chord patterns and individual chords. They can also ask you questions about texture and other elements of music. Dictation questions are ones that you really need to practice because hearing intervals and those kind of things in music is not something you can just put on a flashcard, it comes through practice. So. Yeah, exactly. There are kind of songs that you can use to practice intervals. I think um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is one for like a fifth mm. or something. So if you, we got a sheet given to us and it was like the interval and then a song reference. So if you find something like that online or if you ask your teacher for something like that, then it's gonna be really beneficial to you. But make sure you keep listening to those intervals. Music is literally all about listening. Especially for dictation, you really need to know your intervals. Also, um, there is a website that you can use and it's quite good. It's called Teoria. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not completely sure. But it's T-E-O-R-I-A. And I feel like it's Spanish, but I'm not sure. And it's really good for dictation because it allows you to change settings so you can make it really easy or you can make it really hard and to be honest if you keep working up towards the really hard ones you're going to do amazingly in dictation and I think I think it's like 10 marks or something that you can get for dictation and 10 marks can actually boost you up a grade so I think dictation does matter even though it's like only a page in the paper so everything that we've mentioned that comes up in the paper you can actually practice so the cgp workbook is actually really good for this it's got the answers in it and it's also got the cd to go with it so again it's really good for listening and this video isn't sponsored by the way <laughs> sponsor her cgp but yeah that's all we've got to say for how to revise music i hope this video was helpful to you and i hope you enjoyed it if you haven't already subscribed 
please subscribe and also hit the bell icon while you're at it. If you have any requests for any subject at all in the how to revise certain subject series, please comment down below and I'll see what I can do. Thank you again for watching and goodbye!